G'day guys and girls and welcome back. Uh, today's video is going to be a pretty easy futures box replacement. Just a quick note before we start, um, a thank you to or for all the feedback that I've gotten on the previous videos. It's been pretty overwhelming and um, yeah I appreciate it and I'm glad, I'm glad the videos are helpful for some people. So here she is, uh, the glass has delaminated and cracked at the back. Uh, I've cut a little bit away with a knife already. Um, me and the customer had just checked that the box was actually moving and the foam beneath it was compressed, which it was. It wasn't just a case of delamination, but the box has actually been pushed down into the board, so it's going to need replacing. The glass around the box is in really good condition, as you can see, uh, so that's going to dictate how we, how we tackle this. As per normal with boxes, we're going to start by routing it out using the smallest router bit we can find, uh, the thinnest, so that we're able to freehand it. So our goal is we want to detach the fin slot from the uh, sort of oval shaped flange of the futures box. We don't want to go all the way to the edge of the box where it meets the fiberglass and the board itself, but we want to detach it from the actual fin slot. And our depth is only just as thick as the flange around the box, which is quite thin. So we're detached from the fin slot of the box, but you can see we haven't gone all the way to the edge. So our fiberglass that was intact is still intact. And now using anything you can find, a flathead screwdriver, a pair of pliers, whatever it is, we want to just wedge it in that fin slot and wriggle it just to break any adhesion between the uh, plastic part of the box and the foam. So we're trying to crack the resin. We don't want to break the foam around it, so we're going pretty gentle. Just go as long as you have to, but you'll hear that resin cracking and loosening up. Once you think that the resin is sort of broken away from the foam a little bit, we're going to sink two screws into this box. These screws are actually too short, so I end up replacing them with some longer ones. And of course you want to be really careful not to go all the way through to the deck of the board because then you're going to be repairing the deck as well. Now you can see with the board flipped upside down, grabbing the screws with a pair of pliers and just tapping the, those pliers. This may take a few times, the screw might rip out, you might have to put it back in, you might have to wriggle the box a bit more to break some more resin, but eventually it should come out. So, it's out, and all we're left with is a little plastic border um, from the flange of the box, and we're going to pull that one out by hand. So, just prying away with a couple of flathead screwdrivers, uh, being gentle. We don't really want to break the fiberglass again above that flange. We want to keep as much of the good fiberglass intact, just to save ourselves repair thoughts later on. So, just keep prying and peeling, and be slow and gentle, and pull it out. And that's it, all our plastic is out, the box is removed, and our fiberglass, importantly, is still pretty intact. You'll see here there's some foam that's kind of dislodged. This is why we don't just, well, one of the reasons why we don't just fill holes like this with resin. We need to secure this foam so it's not wobbling around and all weak and loose. So I'm going to use this pour foam. If you don't have the pour foam, then what you're going to have to do is route the shallow area where the flange was sitting to the same depth as the center of the box where the fin slot was, where I'm pouring the foam now, so that you've got a nice even shape and it's all at the same depth. And then you can cut your foam block out and fix that in there with some resin mixed with some micro balloons. The same tactic as uh, what we did in the FCS2 video. Most of these fin box replacements follow the same general set of steps. It doesn't really matter about the box. They do vary a little bit, but for the most part, generally it's the same, same set of steps. So now our foam is hard. This will be the next day. As I said in the FCS2 video, we really don't want to work with this foam until about 24 hours later, the next day generally. It just shrinks back if you glass over it too soon. It doesn't melt like EPS would under poly resin, but it literally shrinks if you glass it too soon. So one of the key differences between Futures and FCS2 
Right now, if this was an FCS2 box, so I would be measuring, as you see here, which is the inside of the fin slot or the inside of the fin edge. But as this is a futures box, it's a little different. So what we want to do is mark off here, which is the center of that fin slot or the center of our fin. And that's the measurement we're going to use to line up our replacement box. Once we have our center line drawn and we know where the top and the bottom of the box is going to sit, we're going to replicate that measurement on the repair side of the board, both top and bottom of course. And then we're going to draw a center line between our two dots and that's going to be the center of our fin slot. So to route this out we're going to use the Futures One Pass Jig. If you don't have one of these then bring your board to me and pay me to replace it because Futures boxes are a much more complicated shape than FCS and if you attempt to freehand it more than likely you're going to make a bit of a mess of the board. So with our jig all lined up, we can grab our bit. So for futures, we use a half inch bit for the center, and we use a three quarter inch bit for our rail boxes. So there's actually two separate bits, unlike FCS, which only has one bit. And our jig is around the same width as your pointing finger, so I'm just making sure that my bit is at the right depth, taking the jig into account. I'm gonna set our jig up, route down once just to route the center box portion of the route and then we're going to go back to the front and then we're going to bring it back one more time to route the flange part of the box. They call it one pass but in reality it's more like two, maybe even four if you count down, up, down, up. False advertising I say, futures you should get onto that. A quick note, just Always make sure your router bit has always stopped spinning before you remove it from the jig. Uh, they're scary tools. I don't want someone hurting themselves or screwing their board up because of me. So turn the router off and make sure that it stops spinning before you lift it up. Because we're essentially doing an install post laminate, our glass is pretty tight. So just running the Dremel along the edges here just until it fits. It might take a few attempts. You don't want to take away too much glass. You don't want to make the fit too loose, but you want the box to be able to slide in with reasonable ease. So you notice I haven't taken the jig off the board because I'm checking the depth now. I might still have to go a little bit deeper. It looks fine, but don't remove the jig until you know it's a good fit. So we haven't done any sanding yet, um, so we're going to do that now. We want to remove our pencil lines because we don't want them underneath our glass. Being poly, once again, we have to sand a fair bit bigger than the area that we're immediately working with because from here we're going to laminate straight away we're going to hot coat straight away right after that box is installed there'll be no more sanding until the very end same as the fcs uh, we're going to mix up our laminating poly resin i always mix about 30 mils of resin for these jobs and we're going to just make sure everything's coated we're going to coat the box Push your fin in there and same as the FCS2s, you want resin pouring out all of the sides or in particular with the futures, you want resin pouring out all of those holes. And just go slowly with this step because we don't want the resin to fall in between the fin and the fin slot. So if we need to wipe some resin away and then continue pushing, we can do that. Keep mushing away, make sure your resin is oozing out. Again, if your resin's not oozing out, pull the box out, add a little more resin, and push again. Remembering that once this box has cured in place, we're going to laminate straight away. So it's important to wipe the deck of the, or the surface of the board super clean. We don't want any lumps of resin that are going to create air bubbles underneath our cloth. Check your angles, make sure they're all right, and then your resin will be instantly cured according to this video. Pull your fin out and we get ready to lamp. Same deal as what we did with the FCS 2s. So I'm gonna have two patches. The first one's gonna be four ounce directly over the box. The bigger patch you see there is two ounce. So that's gonna give us six ounces total over the box itself, but only two ounces over the existing glass because the existing glass is in good condition. It really doesn't need any more lamination. 
So something slightly different from the previous videos, um, you may have noticed that I'm laminating both patches at the same time, as opposed to laying down the four ounce first, then putting the two ounce on top and wetting that out. So because of this, I've got a couple of air bubbles and it's in my bottom layer, my four ounce layer of cloth. So don't be afraid to lift up your top layer and repair those air bubbles as I'm doing here, get them nice and flat, and then you can lay your top layer down again and lay that down nice and flat. Take your time, don't rush, don't stress, catalyze your resin pretty weak if you have to, and yeah, make sure it's done right. Once our uh, lamination is cured, we're gonna mask off for a hot coat. As I always say, you don't have to mask off, that's fine, but I prefer to, just to keep everything contained. Using our sanding resin, we're now pouring a hot coat. I always sort of leave it thicker where I want it, which is over the lamination, and then I just kind of use the dregs of my brush to go to the masking tape, just so I don't end up with a big thick edge against where the masking tape is. Sanding with 120, uh, just to get rid of the masking tape and take care of our tape edges from where our resin met up with our tape. Removing the tape from the box, and then we're gonna start our sand from 240, 320 on the sander, then we're going to take it outside and we're going to wet sand 320, 400, I think I went to 600 with this board. And I've wet sanded all the way to the other rail, the other fin box, maybe a third of the way up the board, just to tie everything in together for polishing. Running the buff over the board, doing that third that I've sanded, but this board being a particularly nice board, hand shaped, hand crafted, um, I ended up running the buff up and down the entire bottom side of the board just because the board's worth it for sure. So why would you not? It doesn't take any extra effort. Any extra polish caught up in the fin boxes, wipe it out, blow it out with the air compressor if you have to. I'm going to make sure our fin angle is consistent with the other side of the board, which should also be done after the box is installed, of course. We're going to make sure that our boxes are lined up correctly. They're same distance apart on both sides, which again, after the install and before the install, the more you check, the better. And just a little overview of this board because it is a really nice board. I tried to find this guy on Instagram. I can't, I think he's in Australia, but he did a hell of a job with this, with this board and deserves some props for his effort, I would say. So that's it, new box is in place, perfectly lined up with the original and Good to go, ready to surf. I've said it before, but I'll just point out again, these kind of jobs are the bread and butter of your local ding repairer, so support them. And this video is just sort of an insight to most people of what we're doing with your boards when you bring it in. Thank you again for watching and subscribing. It means a lot. And I'll see you on the next one. Chee-hoo!